Um, good morning and welcome back. We're having a little technical problem. It's not on our side. Everything is good here and my technical team here is doing their best to get it right. There's a problem on the other side. We are talking to Diana Benskin from Connecticut, who is a poet and um, cultural activist, also a social activist. And she is involved not only in Connecticut with people in the diaspora and people in the US, but she's also involved in Trinidad and Tobago. She's a Trinidadian born and bred from Barbadian parents. And we had an interest in what she was doing and what she was thinking. And um, uh, we thought we would talk with her. Um, before we get back on to her, I just want to let you know that tomorrow I have two very, very um, excellent guests. One is Dr. Kieran Ward of the University of the West Indies. He is doing, he is doing some research on sagasam, and I think what he will have to say is very revealing and very valuable. Um, and uh, we're trying to bring to the country the kind of knowledge work that is taking place that is of value, of value to Trinidad and Tobago and the world, and uh, which we are not taking advantage of because we do not tap the knowledge that exists in our society, just as we do not tap the talent that exists in the society in order to get things done. And our second guess is Dr. Lakram Bodo, uh, who is a member of parliament for Faisabad, and we will talk a little bit on the health sector. We had uh, Minister Dial Singh yesterday, and he spoke about COVID, the health sector, and um, the hospital system, and uh, related things, and we will get a perspective from Dr. Bodo. On Thursday, uh, we will have Ms. Vashti Gardin. She is the head of TTCSI, Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Services Industries, and they really connect with all the service industries in this country. Now, you've heard a lot about the manufacturing sector. You've heard a lot about um, the Chamber of Commerce in Trinidad and Tobago, you've heard about AmCham, uh, which has to do with companies that do business with the United States and so on. But we haven't heard from about the services sector. The services sector is a very large sector in Trinidad and Tobago. So we're going to talk to her about it. And the other person we're going to speak to on that day is Professor Anthony Clayton, uh, we're going to talk to him. He's going to be in Jamaica. And um, Professor Clayton is head of the Institute for Sustainable Development at the University of the West Indies in Mona. So we're going to talk to him. So we have four good guests coming up during the next couple of weeks, and we have two more on Friday. Dr. Kieran Ward tomorrow, Dr. Lakram Budo tomorrow, and on Thursday, the 12th, Ms. Vashti Dugardin of TTCSI and Professor Anthony Clayton from uh, Mona, Jamaica at the Institute for Sustainable Development. And we are going to be talking to Dr. Clayton on a very interesting topic besides the issues of climate change and sustainable development. We are going to be talking to him about the future of cities. But we now reconnect with Ms. Diana Benson, can we get Benz, Benskin? Benskin, is that yes, better? Sorry. Yes, yeah, that's much better. The sound okay, is better. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, much, much better. All right, thank so you. we were talking about what you do in Connecticut as a cultural activist, as a radio um, talk show host, co-host. And mm -hmm. you, you also talked about social activism. Talk, talk to me a little bit about what what you do in social activism and how you got involved in that? Well, uh, from the moment I became a humanitarian, 
for over two decades or more, I developed a new perspective on everything around me. I am more conscious of people and their daily struggles. I'm also a global ambassador honoree with the Divas of Color in London. My work is important to me because I know it has a ripple effect and how it affects the impacts the lives of people and, and many families and, and the vulnerable populations. I myself have emerged from challenging circumstances, from not having anything at all. So I'm driven to assist, you know, from the young at heart, from the not to the not so young, uh, someone who's looking gloomy to that person who may be in need of a cheerful word, to the beggar on the street, to the person who may be in need of a cheerful word, to the person who might be wearing a three-piece suit. It is part of my ministry. All right. The, um, but, okay, you, you are moved to do this. You said you came from humble circumstances. You made yourself into somebody and you feel the need to do charitable work. What is it that drives you? Why do you do this? I am called to help the poor, the hungry, the hurting, the abused, the broken. I answer the call because Muhammad Ali said, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. <laughs> uh, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot, the, the pandemic, revealed uh, the disparity between the have, the have not, the have nothing at all. And it, when a young man reaches out to me and tells me, Miss Ben Skin, through social media, my little girl has, is, has gas pains because I have nothing to give her to eat. What am I to do, Dr. Tawari? Yeah. Um, so the, the, I, I want to ask you two things. Uh, one is immediate, but one is uh, perhaps more historical and cultural in your case. I mean, you are Trinidadian. You migrated to the United States. And... Trinbejgonian. Huh? Sorry? I'm a Trinbejgonian. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you migrated to the United States. What, what is it in your experience in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that have helped to shape and transform your consciousness? When I came to the United States, a very good question. Very good question. When I came to the United States of America... I thought I, I started doing a, a degree in journalism. I thought I was going to get assistance from my papi to complete my degree, but alas, that was not to be. Yeah. So I had to fend for myself, and those I did, you know, odd and end jobs to support myself. Nothing uh, untoward or, you know, that would make my grandmother not proud of me, uh, sure. Lillian Matilda Benskin. So I know what it is to have to, as a girl, fend for myself and support myself. And I always said, and being uh, where I come from, like I said, uh, Dr. Tawari, I am a child... I, am, I grew up in a home where the other siblings always had and, got, and were provided for because I was a stepchild. I was not the child of my mother's husband. So they were provided for and I was not. So I always said whenever I grew up and I was able to have, I would share my little with others. Okay. You see? Yes, so, so it, you, that it, it comes really, from there. You, you've really 
turned an unfairness into you, into a kind of um, disposition of fairness to others. And yes, I mean, I want to commend you. That's a wonderful thing. It's a, it's a very nice story. Um, and, but you were talking about COVID just now. That was the immediate thing that I wanted to talk to you about. How has mm -hmm. COVID, what has COVID done, first of all, to the people around you? Uh, mm -hmm. What has it done to the people, to the people you are connected with through the social media, through the radio, etc.? And what has it done to you? What have you seen yourself? I agree with you that COVID has shown the big divide between the haves, the have-nots, and the don't have any. I think that has become very, very clear. And this is so not only within countries, but among countries in the world. And this, this has been something we knew, but a revelation that hit us so hard, we cannot now avoid it. But I'm talking on a personal level now. What, what has COVID done to the people that you know, the people you are in contact with, and to you? That is a great question. But the bigger question is, what has the government COVID-19 policies done to the population of TNT, especially the poor, disadvantaged people? Initially, Dr. Tawari, the government of TNT placed a wedge between the citizens on the ground and the citizens in the diaspora by stating that the science would support the border closure, keeping citizens locked out, that they would be the ones bringing in COVID. And they instituted a draconian exemption policy that resulted in citizens being becoming disjointed and, and, and separated, missing funerals, and separating them from their loved ones. There were situations where uh, one particular long lady trying to get back home. She suffered a miscarriage at the airport. She was jettisoned to another Caribbean island, was walking out to the sea in a, 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 a depressive state, trying to commit suicide. So, you know, and, and this is where WZYE, we took up the banter uh, for, the, for these, these, you know, disenfranchised people. And then people became homeless, sleeping on the pavements in other countries, selling bottles to try to sustain themselves because they ran out of funds. You know, they came on a temporary visit and they had no way of supporting themselves. So I, did, I, I, I had to take in people in my own home and I, I'm pay, I paid for individuals to get back to their, their loved one, including getting paying for quarantine, forcing persons to pay for quarantine in Trinidad and Tobago when you were the ones that locked them out, you know? And up to now, people are still suffering the effects of depression and the trauma that they in, in, in endured as a result of this draconian exemption policy, you know? So these are the things of what that what this what COVID has done for them. I am I am supporting a young lady who is still stranded in London because her family cannot uh, has been unemployed. There's no funds to help her get back home to send money to feed her. And I have committed to paying for her ticket once she's fully vaccinated to return to her family. I have taken the responsible stance to get her back home because she went there to study. These are the things that COVID has done to persons. One young lady reached out to me. She was suicidal. I put her on to a psychologist that we had on our show to talk her down from that state of mania because I am not versed in that uh, uh, psychology. But I was a listening ear. So this is what COVID has done. I have become a mediator between the people and their suffering. So I don't, I don't, 
my phone doesn't go off sometimes, Dr. Tiwari. So you, you, you really are, are condemning the government decision to keep people out uh, from, that's to say, citizens of Trinidad and Tobago out. You are condemning that policy because that draconian you are policy, saying yes. that given the heartbreak that you have seen, it was not a wise policy, nor was it a humane policy. What would you no. say to the government's argument that, look, we have a responsibility to uh, look after the population here, and we cannot take the risk and the responsibility of managing those who are outside. They've got to find a way of managing themselves because our first duty is to protect those who are here. That is an argument that was argued, was taken by the then uh, Minister of National Security as well as the Prime Minister. Go ahead. That is all well and good, sir. But um, you had a hundred and something deaths in in April. Then uh, where are you now with the um, SOE and the draconian? Uh, exemption policy. So I say it didn't work. Uh, you were bringing in, you were requesting a negative PCR test, which says you are not infected with COVID. So how were you bringing in the virus? And you are requiring people to go into quarantine before you were released into society. So how were you bringing in COVID, Dr. Tawari? No, I do not let, agree with the let's say, let's say in China now, for instance, where you have this outbreak with the, with the um, variant, uh, what they have done there is close out their borders and they are preventing people from even leaving. In parts of Australia where they have a problem, they have also closed out the exit of people from that particular state within the... Uh, Australian national system. Um, so border closures have been used by governments. I'm not excusing the government. I'm just making the argument so that you can make your case based on your experience and your knowledge. Um, border closures have been used in order to prevent the spread of disease. Um, what is it that you are really angry about with what has happened? Is it the, in, the, the inhumane consequences of the border closure? Are they closing the borders to their citizens? Yes. You think that is wrong? Yes. Okay. All right. I get you. You think citizenship means something? And yes. whether or not you are in the country or outside of the country that should have the same full meaning of what citizenship means. Venezuela sent a, a ferry the other day to take their citizens back, didn't they? Yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true. Okay, I get you. And, but you are working now with people in Trinidad and Tobago. Why are they in touch with you quite in New Jersey on your radio station and on Be social media? because they're not getting any response from people on the ground there in Trinidad and Tobago. And also here, at the height of the pandemic in the United States, the extension embassies, offices here, ministries here, offices, they were closed to okay. people here that were reaching out for help. I myself called to try to, you know, say, well, I'm a person stranded to see what help I can get. No luck. This is in New York and Washington, D.C.? New or York, is it both? Washington, everywhere. No luck. So you are saying citizens of Trinidad and Tobago who were stranded in the U.S. had no support from the system organized Extension. by government to look after them because no the embassies no. were closed and you became Precise. a kind of ambassador because they had to find myself, somebody to talk to. Myself, 
Gary Mahabir, Anselm Laborn, and we have a gentleman on the ground there in Trinidad and Tobago, Opinion Box, who helps us with the hamper drives. All right, I want in to Trinidad show a little bit Tobago. of that because you shared those videos with me. I have a couple mm -hmm. of videos. Could we start with the first one? Go right ahead, sir. Huh? Go right ahead. He doesn't know which video. Um, Anyone? Yeah, yeah. I, I have the videos because you sent them to me. So anyway, let's continue the talk. Uh, so you're helping people in Trinidad and Tobago because... Go ahead. But apparently, Miss Diana Benskin and myself, we could find all the greedy people, right? Because they're saying they're greedy. So all this here is for the greedy people. Right? I want to thank Miss Diana Benskin because all of this is because of her. All these families, these greedy families that the government talk about, going to get something to eat. Because of Miss Diana Benskin. So when all you think Miss Diana and them doesn't be doing work in the background. It's a real thing that's be going on in the background. Right? So thank you again, Miss Benskin, for your support. And the families and them will really appreciate this donation on your behalf. Thank you so much, ma'am. So yes, Diana. They are the hampers. Yeah, thanks, boy. Do I think it has to do with computers? Um, the school is that correct? Be seen. It only no, let, we can cut that now. No, I think that video. The the what is the name of the organization here? The which one? The the one that. Yes, the, 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 the organization that helps you in Trinidad. What's the name? Opin uh, Opinion Box. He's a All blogger. Right. right. That, uh, you know, he organizes. Uh, we organize getting the funds to him. He does the shopping and distribution yes. and dropping so off of stuff for us. Opinion Box Opinion is really Box. responding there to a statement mm -hmm. by the Minister mm -hmm. of Social Development that some people were yes. needy and some were greedy. And greedy. And obviously mm -hmm. he is very angry about it. And he is mm -hmm. acknowledging what you have done to help them. Mm -hmm. And he yes. is saying that all these needy people are really greedy people, ironically. <laughs> Uh, and mm -hmm. he is saying that he is going to distribute that there. And then you see yes. some of the other work that you are doing in Trinidad and Tobago. So you've left yes. Trinidad and Tobago. You have not forgotten. You're very angry that people were abandoned who are citizens in the United mm -hmm. States. And you want to do something about it. And as a cultural and social activist, you wanted to have your voice heard. And you've made mm -hmm. the point... You've made the claim, which we are going to check out, um, that which nobody has done before, which is that the embassies mm -hmm. were closed to citizens while citizens were locked out in the country. I, I find that kind of um, problematic. Huh? No, so we no are answer. To, we are going to check it out. Huh? No answer. No answer from the, the phones. All right, so no now call. that you've... You, you continue to do this work. What is the next step that you are going to take in the work that you do? We're going to have to close now because we're coming to the news. Uh, what, okay. what is the next step that you're going to take in the work that you do? Well, uh, being a humanitarian, helping people who are suffering any time, any place in the world, uh, humanitarian work requires being responsible, conscious of circumstances of people's lives and helping them on the basis of need without regardless to their race, ethnicity, religion, political affiliation, or social status. Um, you know, they can, I hope to, I'd like to have an NGO on the ground uh, to assist anyone, anywhere, you know. Uh, I'd like to take it into the economy of TNT 
as they recover from the pandemic, you know, to help them to realize economic help and also to be physically healthy. I showed them how to create intergenerational health, intergenerational wealth also. All right. Well, that I want to thank you very much, uh, Ms. Benskin, for being with us this morning. I think it's, it's, been really, a pleasure. Um, it's really heartwarming that as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, I don't know if you're a citizen of the U.S. now, but as, I a, am. as uh, uh, originally a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, now a citizen of the U.S., you have not forgotten. And of Barbados also. Yeah. <laughs> and you have not forgotten that the Caribbean exists and that Trinidad and Tobago exists and that there are people here that you care about, that you are connected with, and you have an all-embracing philosophy. You are rooted in your ethnicity and culture, but you have an all-embracing philosophy that is humanitarian. And we thank you for your caring and for the work that you did, and we thank you for coming on the show. We'll talk another time. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Ms. Benskin. Um, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the variety of the discussion this morning. Um, uh, covered a broad spectrum of issues in the country and um, issues important, I think, in the world. We thank you for watching. As I told you, we have two wonderful guests uh, tomorrow. They are Dr. Kieran Ward and Dr. Lakram Budo. And uh, um, we shift now to the news with Chanil Alciran.